We are David and Jessica Hayes, the authors of the Hayes Guidebook to the Costa Blanca. Join us in our series in our Hayes Mobile as we take in all of the beautiful places in and around this area. From the salt flats of Santa Pola to the big striking guns and beautiful scenery in Cartagena. But today we're off in our Hayes Mobile to discover the delights of the coastal path in the Orihuela Costa. The Orihuela Costa gets its name from being the coastal area from the inland town of Orihuela. We're going to be taking in all the beautiful coves from Dehesa de Campamor onto idyllic Cabaroy, around the corner to La Zenia before embarking on our journey through Playa Flamenca and finally arriving at Punta Prima. The coast has got lots of lovely little coves, lots of sandy beaches, rocky cliffs, idyllic marinas. All of which you'll be able to take in as we embark on our journey today. So when you go home today and your friends and neighbours ask you, what have you done today? They'll probably reply, not a lot, just sat on the terrace watching the world go round, talk to a few neighbours, and you'll be able to tell them what you've done. You've been on a lovely coastal walk along the Orihuela Costa and discovered lots of beaches and beach bars and cafes that you never knew existed. And we hope then you'll be taking them and encouraging them and motivating them to join you when you go back and find what you never knew existed. Come on, let's go. So we started our walk today behind us at the white building, the Club Nautica, above the marina at Campamore. Now we're going to be heading on to the beautiful beach of Playa de la Glia here in Dehesa de Campamore. 650 metres, the largest on the Orihuela Costa, and carrying one of the many blue flags that are awarded in this area. We'll actually be heading on to the elevated concrete walkway that you can see around the cliff. And you can either walk along the beach on the sand or along the pavement on the road. It's a lovely time of the year to come and do the coastal walk during the winter when it's all a little bit quieter, not so many people around. It is Jess and in, as you know in the summer it's very busy with all of the, the Madridians and other people from the inland villages that come to use them in the summer but in the winter time it's all hours, all this fresh air, scenery, the temperature is really nice for walking. One of my favourite parts of the walk this, Jess, where they've put the investment in, hugging all these idyllic coves together. It's one of the newest parts, isn't it, because it was a government initiative to join up all of the places along the coast. You can do it in stages, you don't have to do the whole day all in one. Do you remember the time we did it with Neil and Sue? And we parked the car at Campamore, they dropped their car off at uh, Punta Prima, and we walked the whole journey, and it took us five and a... Five and a half hours. And how, how, we had about an hour and three quarters for lunch, didn't we? With yeah. a cake stop for you, because you love your cakes. Mm, and there's plenty of little places to stop <laughs> yeah. along the route. And it's not just about the, the walking, it's about the views and the sound, the sound of the sea. Exactly. It's so relaxing and tranquil. the south to the north or the north to the south and either way you get stunning views if you're going southwards you get to look at the Marmanor. If you're heading north you, you end up with the, the skyline of urban Torre Vieja and even by night you get the moonlight coming down and your favourite time in the morning. When the sun's coming up it rises up over the Mediterranean Sea and sets behind so in the evenings the beaches are almost in the shade. So really there's never a bad time to come only a good time to come. It's 
a lovely day today. Beautiful day, isn't it? Really, really nice. I'm so glad we made the effort. Perfect day for a picnic and walk. <laughs> yep. Doesn't matter if it's a long walk or a short walk. We enjoy doing it no matter what. If you've got an hour, two hours, a whole day, this beautiful walk can be stretched any distance. Wow, look at all of this around us. Mum and Orn, the spit, how clear is that today? It's beautiful. Oh, beautiful scenery all around. This is what I love about life and living here in Spain. Look at these idyllic coves. That's like a millionaire's beach, that is. And the sun on the, on the sea, all sparkling. And how do these cliffs get all their striking colours that make it so pretty? Well, we used to be underneath the sea. Where we're standing now used to be underneath the sea. And over time, during the dry seasons, the sand from the Sahara comes along and lies on top of the sea and then falls down to the bottom. And during the wet seasons, when there's a lot of rain, all the rivers come down into the Mediterranean Sea and bring with them all of the mud and things from inland, and then they settle. That's and it really gives the layered effect and makes the different colours. And that's how this, this coastline, like many others, gets such a striking identity. Well, and that's why you've got such a variation, because you've got the deposits, and then yeah. you've got the hard bits of rock, like out over there, and the coral reefs, etc. It really makes for an interesting views as you walk along That's really the coastline. interesting, Jess. And there's the path we're going to take now along Agua Marina. And again, another corner to pass, another beautiful view to Following unfold. all the palm trees. Yeah, this is amazing. Wouldn't it be nice to get to know those people we could have a barbecue on there, Barbecue on the roof. Yeah, that'd be nice. we get all those views that we've just sampled there. How wonderful. Okay, crystal clear the water is. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? And that's all getting chalked up because they're doing their, their they're maintenance. They're redoing the beach. Yeah, yeah, they always do that. Rebuilding the beach. They do it every uh, spring is to get it all ready and so they can pass all their European standards, like the blue flag. Yes, very important part of any tourism destination that they have the blue flag flying proudly. Stunning, isn't it, Jess? I don't know which way to look. No, <laughs> I don't, know, to be honest. To the beach, the properties <laughs> with their landscape gardens. Look how these uh, gardens are all towered. Very terraced. It's great. This connects onto that concrete elevated walkway that we were at earlier, yeah. which goes onto the back of Playa La Guia, which goes up to Desert Hazard Camp and Moor Marina. It's I mean, just... it's all linked. I absolutely love this beach. For some reason, Jess, it reminds me of when I was a child. I was so lucky to be able to have, you know, foreign holidays. And my mum and dad used to take me to Menorca. And we had this little property that we used to go to year on, year out. And the same faces, the same friends would be on a very similar beach like this. And you could just walk down. And with all the surroundings, it just reminds me of that. That's why I like this beach, Jess. Gives you the feel of our old time Spain with yeah, the white buildings and the, and the wooden shutters. They were great times they were, and, and, and that's why I enjoy doing this, because life's all about having great times, and this is all free. It's 11 o'clock, we're the only ones here. That's because everybody else is sensibly having coffee. Yeah, come on, <laughs> go and get, let's go and get a coffee. Oh, wow, Dave. It just shows you the variation of this walk. You've got the beaches, the coves, the cliffs, all the beautiful man-made tile promenades, and then this. A Marinas, beautiful... look, there's Cabaroy Marina. Yeah, we've come a long way, haven't we? But yeah, in such a short space of time. This is the part that you were on about. You know, when, when I asked you in the paper, there was a natural park right on the shoreline of the Orihuela Costa. You'd read something about it, hadn't you? Yes, the uh, government decided in about 2008 to start doing a park to preserve the coastline and to preserve the fossils that are here. It's a special site, a special scientific interest with the fossils and also to protect a special species of plants, which I can't pronounce its Spanish name. No, yeah, it's all right, I'll let you off. <laughs> the promenades that they've done through it, you can see them, they're all I can see um, them. taped off with the rope or roped off. It's nice to see them spending money, you know, from the town hall and improving the area. Improving what the area already has to offer. Yeah. What 
a great viewpoint this is. It's a good little park. They've got the information boards, but that one is uh, in Spanish, but the one right at the top of the cliff yeah, no, is they, in English. It's and nice that they, uh, they do a bit of that because it's important that we read what's around us. And and you don't have to come down here. The walkway continues all the way along the cliff, so if you don't fancy doing all those steps, you can walk along the top of the cliff. That's right. The choice is yours. So uh, we've chosen to take the more strenuous route up and down these steps today. But if you want to, you don't have to. You can walk along the promenade, nice flat continuation of the coastal path. Great thing about the promenade is you get to experience the views we've explored down beneath here and still have the same feeling up above. And what a nice promenade it is. So you can clearly see where we're going to be heading now, about half an hour walk away to the White Tower at Cabaroy with its marvellous marina. We've got to go past the beach first. And then we'll head up through the trees and all the delights that Cabaroy has to offer. But initially, this place where we're at now, Agua Marina, a great point to come just on its own. But most importantly, where we started today from De Heza to Campamor, this is a good place to end and split your walk into two segments. Or you could start here and walk to the tower, have your lunch and walk back again. This is your favourite cove, isn't it, Jess? It is. Every time I do this walk, it never ceases to amaze me how stunning it looks. Every corner you go around it's just another beautiful setting, all individually different, that's what's great isn't it? It's very popular this beach isn't it because of all the restaurants and everything, they, you know, they enjoy coming and looking at the vistas. Especially out of season, during the uh, low seasons it seems to be a bit of a sun trap here so you get a lot more people sunbathing. Fishermen over there look Jess, fishermen here. Yes yeah, so you can fish all the way along the coast, you just need to go to the tourist office and they'll tell you where to go in um, Torre Vieja and you buy yourself your fishing licence and then that gives you carp launch to fish on the coast. The biggest decision you're going to have to make today, where to have that packed lunch? We're going to have it further along beside Cabo Roy Tower overlooking our favourite beach. And all the walking we've done so far, we need some food. Come on, Come let's on. go. So here we are at Cabaroy. We've got some brilliant vistas out over the Mediterranean Sea. And it's because of this that the big white tower behind us was built. Famous in the area for guarding the shorelines from the Berber pirates. This is one of the finest examples, but you'll also find many more from Tole Redadada, La Mata, Torre La Mata, Santa Pola. They were all here for a reason. The Berber pirates had a base on the island of Tabarka, and they used to invade regularly the shoreline here. And what would happen would be the watch people up in the top of the watchtower would have great views out, and when they saw the pirates attacking, they would light a fire and all the other watchtowers along the coast would do so and hence pass the message along to say that the Bioba pirates were attacking. Like this one and all the others, they just add ambience to this coastline and there's no better point now to enjoy that well-deserved drink soaking in the atmosphere of the history and the nature that surrounds us. So I don't know about you Jess but I'm ready for a drink. Yes me too, let's Come on, go. Then, let's go. How about the marina? If you deviate slightly off the coastal path, you arrive here in Cabaroy Marina. But there's a certain aura and ambience about a marina. It's all part of the dream when we've moved to Spain. Everyone loves a boat. What a great place to come down and live those dreams that you've always wanted. The magic Mediterranean boat. Well, if you're like me, you can just come down here, listen to the jangling of the masks, and just soak up the atmosphere that these beautiful marinas offer. Isn't that right, Jess? Yes, and you can dream. Well, you never know. Mons 2, Rodney, this time next year, we'll be millionaires. millionaires. We'll have one of those. <laughs> well, this is great, isn't it? Look at that. Couldn't ask for better. Not only do you have the classy marina, you also have some fish. Oh, look at that boat just choking off out there. The marina here at Cabaroy has recently undergone a major refurbishment costing an estimated 2 million euros. It has a mooring capacity for around 207 boats. 
Every August, the Cabaroig Regatta is held here, one of the oldest regattas in the region. This beach at Cabaroig in the marina is one of the many beaches along the Orihuela Costa that has been awarded the blue flag. Blue flag is an award given to beaches and marinas that have met stringent standards. The right to fly a blue flag at a beach or marina is a strong indication of high environmental standards and is a much sought after accolade around the world. This is the master with the radars on that can see 40 miles out to sea to stop illegal immigrants entering the country via the boats and drug people dropping off their loads at the sea. That's right, they erected them I think up near Benidorm and then there's Alicante, Santa Pola, down here on the Orihuela Costa as well. There's a whole system all the way along the coast and it's monitored by the Trafico Guardia Civil and there's five officers that look after it. Well it's good to see they're doing something positive to, to stop such activity. Yeah, I had a really big success in Santa Pola in January of this year. They intercepted 600 kilograms ah, of uh, hash. That's great. Well, may it be a success. I wouldn't like it in my garden, but it's doing the job. I'll tell you what, my nearest TA centre back in the Midlands was in Leafy Sheldon. I'll tell you, this place has got the best view any Territorial Army base could wish for. It's not used regularly any longer, just for the odd training exercises, but it's worth coming. It's most, worth being a member of the TA just to get a look at that. Most definitely. Most definitely. What a great view. This is a really interesting part of the water, Jess. Where did this sort of come from, do you reckon? I have absolutely no idea why there's a bridge it's and a like tunnel. How, how strange is that? And I love the traditional... Traditional tiles. Yeah. Very interesting part of the walk, this. Really nice. And we've got another corner. Another to, corner to go, to go around. around. Very exciting. What's around the corner? Fantastic. Fantastic walk, there's so many good things to see, the great big houses. Those houses are amazing, it's like Simon Cowell would own one of those. I'm not too sure about Simon Cowell, but here's Silla Black does. Yeah, do you remember on our property tour, sat in the van, Tony Wogan owns this one, Silla Black owns that one, and we were all nodding. But I don't know if anybody's going to be living here for much longer with the state of the cliffs. No, how, how do you reckon this formation happens, Jet? The water comes over the ground and then runs down and takes away the the sand. Just naturally working its way down and... And a bit of wind as well. Blimey. I wouldn't like to uh, know what that'll be like in 20 It minutes. makes it great for the walking. You feel yeah. like you're walking inside a cliff. Yeah, one minute we're on the top, then we feel like we're walking through it. Look at that. Even at this time of year, people in the sea. And the dog. Do you know there's a local tale about that? When a man goes into the sea at this time of year, he goes in a man and he comes out a woman. There we are, Jess, the Isla de Carmen, the Oruela Costa's only island. You still got that little bit of kid in you? I have. Am I thinking what you're thinking? Yeah, race you. Come on then. <laughs> so here we are on the Oruela Costa's claim to fame. It's island, the Isla de Carmen. Or is it? Not quite, there's a little bit of beach that it's attached to over there. Yeah. And so it only becomes an island during a storm. But still, it's still officially an island. And nevertheless, just adds to the charm to this part of the walk. And the walk's going to take us just into the distance there, in the headland of Punta Prima, where our destination ends on this fantastic walk. So not too far to go, but still more varied scenery along the way. Ready? Yep. Come on then. It's been your dream, Jess, hasn't it, to have a frontline property like that? Yes, yes, I would have liked one until we looked at the information about the coastal law on Google. Could you believe what we found? No. I can't believe that if the waves or the wind off the waves is anywhere near the property, the authorities own it. They do. It's part of the public domain. And then the authorities 
give you 60 years to stay in the property. They tell you you can't sell it and you can't pass it on to anybody. And then after 60 years, it becomes theirs. Do you remember when we read it and I said, do you want one now? No, thank you. That's money saved. <laughs> no property for you, just hotels from now on, Jess. Oh, OK then, just hotels. <laughs> So this is uh, Lazenia Beach, one of the busiest beaches on the Orwella Costa. Very popular, isn't it? In the summer, this is a real hot spot for people. So I'd get down here early if you're looking to enjoy the, uh, the beach in the summer here. But we're going to carry on now, as far as the eye can see, but not very far left to do, around the headland towards Playa Flamenca. Past those white houses. That's it, and then just eventually ending up at Punta Prima. Not very far to go, Jess? No, not far at all. Fantastic. Another one of your favourite destinations, Jess, the Plaza of Playa Flamenca, a lovely family open space for all to enjoy. It's great to come here in the evening because it's floodlit. And spent a lot of money, again, a great example of the infrastructure that they've put in for all of us to enjoy this lovely coastline. And this is no exception, everyone on their benches today enjoying it out with the dogs. Certainly is a nice place. As we're walking through this wide plaza, we know that it connects to the lovely beach of Playa Flamenca with its open wide sand, allowing all the family to enjoy the lovely Mediterranean. There's so many nice beaches just to come and sit and relax. And different ones as well. Each day of the week you can try a different beach. I know, we are lucky. We are very, very lucky. And every now and then you need to just remind yourself of that and say how lucky you are. And I was just to say, remember when we first got here, Spain doesn't come to us, we've got to go and get it. Indeed, and I'd like yeah. to think that you and I do that and, and, and may it continue. I am starting to think about that glass of rosé wine or that large, cool Cerveta. There's something about the Mediterranean, Jess, isn't there? It just encapsulates your thoughts and you can just sit here for hours and just look out to sea. Well, it's a big sea. It's 2.5 million square kilometres, bordered by 22 different countries, and it has a coastline of 46,000 kilometres. And it has an average depth of 1,500 metres. Listen to you, Stato. Where, where did you learn all of that? Uh, the internet's very useful. Well, that makes sense because I know that uh, three of the, uh, the deepest ports in the world, Pearl Harbour being number one, but the other two is uh, Menorca, Mahon, and Cartagena. So that, that makes sense. Well, it's really nice to think about those things as you're walking past. We're going to have our final beach stop of the day. And a lovely beach it is before we uh, find that well-deserved drink, Jess. Lovely. <laughs> Punta Prima, Jess, one of our favourite places, and do you know why? Because it's the end. Because when we do the whole walk in one day, that bar is all we can think of, isn't it? Enjoying a cerveza at the end of the day. Fantastic. We hope you've all enjoyed, like ourselves, this beautiful insight to the Orihuela Costa. It's been a great day, hasn't it? Exploring all of the sandy beaches and the rocky coves and the marinas of this area. The whole purpose is to get you all out and about to places you may not have known that were here before. And if you've enjoyed today, you'll enjoy many of the other destinations that feature in our guidebook. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you next time.